friends. Um, my name is Kirsten and I work at Baltimore County Public Library and I'm usually on the bookmobile and um, that's super fun because we get to go all over the county to um, places like Owings Mills, yeah, Catonsville, yeah, um, Arbutus, Middle River, Rosedale, uh, Lockern, Gwyn Oak, all of our favorite places. Uh, we bring a big old truck with lots of games and crafts and things and some of you may recognize me from out on the road but today I'm coming to you from inside my house because that's where we all are right now and um, I'm gonna show you how to do something cool it's going to look a little bit like this when we're all done um, so it is a watercolor painting and I've decided to go with the Baltimore skyline but you can make it anything you want uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to use white crayon white crayon who uses white crayon for anything you can't see it this is the only reason I have ever found to use white crayon it's gonna be awesome so we're going to use white crayon to color an area of the paper that we don't want the paint to stick. Then we're going to use our watercolor paints and go all over the whole paper. And we're going to watch as the parts that have been colored with the white crayon don't get painted and they show up um, as white, just like in this picture here. So um, let me tell you what you're going to need. A white crayon, paper, some water, um, and a paintbrush, and paints. Now these are very, very simple watercolor paints. There's nothing fancy about these. You can use your Crayolas that you have somewhere in your craft closet that probably look all messy like this. And Then you're going to need a picture of the Baltimore skyline or um, just to pull one up on your computer and look at it and just kind of outline where the different buildings are. What I did was I just um, printed one out and I cut it so that the outline of the buildings were easy to trace. So I stuck it on my paper like this. And then I used pencil to go around. It doesn't have to be exact, it just has to kind of look like Baltimore. And as you can see, it's all colored in there. Um, so I went back with my white crayon and I colored in all those details. Okay. Show you up close colored in all these details right through here and um, and then I colored the whole thing stopping at around I don't know like an inch and a half two inches beneath the outline and you'll see how that comes through at the end I didn't make a hard line it's just kind of scribbles down there um, so we'll see what that looks like as we paint. So, oh, let me tell you about the paper. Um, if you have any kind of paper that has something um, like a rough texture, that's great. If you have copier paper or loose leaf paper, this is not gonna work so well. So, um, mixed media paper is great. If you have watercolor paper, which this is, it's very heavy. It's going to really um, show that color well when we actually do the painting. Um, the quality of the paper isn't super important right now because this is just a fun little painting that we're doing for ourselves. And as you have seen in my example, I did um, a rainbow pattern because next month is Pride and I might want to make some presents for my family or friends who are celebrating Pride Month. Uh, but 
but you can make it one color, you can make it two colors, you could do whatever you like. Um, so while I'm doing this, I'm going to talk a little bit about why this even happens. So our water molecules are polarized, right? There's a positive end and a negative end, and that attraction between the two poles makes the water stick to itself and stick to other things. Wax, which is what our white crayon is made out of, um, is now polarized. So um, it doesn't have that attraction going on. It's going to repel the water. And you can find this in nature um, on leaves. You can see the water beads up on the leaf after it rains. Um, and birds' feathers also have wax, which is why their wings don't get all um, waterlogged and they can still fly. So, um, wax is super important in um, the natural world and we're going to use that property right here. We're going to wet our brush and just paint with water. In the first inch or two. And I'm going to take my red and just go back over. Now what you will see is some of the color um, beating up a bit on the wax. And you can just sponge that off with a paper towel. Mm, what comes next in our rainbow? I think it's orange. So we'll go back and put some more water. You'll see that the red is kind of blending over and you want that. You want to see your colors mixed together because that is the beautiful thing about watercolors is that they mix so nicely together and it'll show you that nice gradient of color. So cool, right? The great thing about watercolors is you're letting the water kind of take the paint where it wants to go. So you really don't need to have any special artistic talent. Just have to have patience and um, and a good eye of where the colors are. So we're gonna go to the next one and I'm gonna get some yellow. You want to put a lot of yellow on your brush because yellow is obviously a very light color. So we're gonna get a lot of yellow paint and just really go over that one there. Don't be afraid to overdo it with the yellow. And what's next in our rainbow? Green, my favorite color. I'm also a big fan of our BCPL teal color, in case you hadn't noticed. Oops. dry super fast too so um, you can make this really fast and then have it ready to give to somebody like pretty soon after Blue. by the way does anybody know any of the names of these buildings that are in our Baltimore skyline 
you leave a comment if you know what those buildings are called? We see them all the time, but we never think about, oh, what is that? Except for the aquarium. I always know which one is the aquarium. And our last color is... Purple! As you can see, I did nothing fancy. I just put some water and then added the color. Um, if you want to fix anything, you can definitely go right back over all of this and um, with a darker color, obviously yellow is not going to show up over purple, but you can go back over and add more color wherever you feel like it. Um, another possibility is making like a um, dark blue or even black down here and then that would look kind of like a reflection in the harbor. That's really pretty too. Um, so here is our painting. Now, was that easy or what? Friends, thank you so much for painting with me today. I hope you enjoyed that video. Thank you for watching all the way through. Um, and check back on our Facebook page or our YouTube page for more uh, virtual videos like this. And every Friday we'll have a new Steam Powered Friday video. So check back for that. Thanks so much. Bye!